Hey folks, today I am going to be rebuilding this Mitsuba Honda Accord starter motor. I think it's pretty neat how these Honda starters are rebuildable even for a do-it-yourselfer because they don't require any special tools and the replacement parts are readily available from lots of different online Honda parts dealers. In addition, personally at least, I think it's pretty neat to tear one of these open and just see how it works inside. So let's get started. Now before you get going on this, you might want to just make sure the solenoid is working correctly in your starter because that's not a serviceable part. If the solenoid's um, not working, then you'll have to get a new starter. Uh, so this is the solenoid terminal and the other terminal is ground. The solenoid does two things. One thing is it pushes out this pinion gear to engage the flywheel. It also closes contacts to supply um, electrical current to the motor. So we can start by doing just a quick impedance check. So I've just got a little test lead clipped onto the solenoid terminal in there. And then I'm just measuring the resistance through the solenoid, which is about 0.56 ohms or so. So you can see it's very low resistance. The solenoid takes a lot of current. And about probably 0.2 ohms of that, 0.16 is my uh, clip leads alone or my test leads alone. So the total resistance is very low, so it's hard to get a good measure on that, and I'm not even sure what the spec is for that. If you did measure open circuit, then for sure you know your solenoid is bad, but perhaps a better test is to energize the solenoid and make sure that the pinion gear comes out as it should, so we'll do that next. So probably the best test of the solenoid is just to apply 12 volts to it and make sure that the pinion gear does um, get forced out as it's supposed to. In order to do that, you need something that can supply a lot of current because it takes about 20 amps or so to drive the solenoid. I am using an old pair of jumper cables that I've repurposed, uh, hooked up to a 12 volt battery. I do have a circuit breaker, 150 amps in series with that for safety. If you're using a pair of jumper cables directly, just be mindful that um, there could be safety concerns there if you short them out. So I'm also going to throw a current clamp on there just out of curiosity to measure what the solenoid current is. So as I short out this alligator clip, it'll energize the solenoid. And you see the pinion gear does get forced out as it's supposed to, indicating a good solenoid. And it looks like, I'll throw this scope shot up on the screen, but it looks like it was about 21 and a half um, amps of solenoid current. So now that we know that the solenoid is in good condition, let's get to the rebuild. Here's a quick shot of the current waveform through the solenoid. And you can see that the current does get up to about 21 point five amps or so. I'm just gonna mark this wire harness holder so I remember where it went. And now for the fun part to tear into this. So there's a little rubber cap here and we're gonna remove this uh, power connector because that'll let us uh, remove the rubber boot afterwards. And then we'll remove the two bolts holding the whole unit together. We can take the back cover off. You can see there's a, a bushing in there that holds the shaft of the back of the armature. And looking in the back you see the armature and then the magnets of the stator on the outside. So I'm just going to set it on some wheel chocks here. Now uh, sometimes I can tell this motor housing is already free from the end gear unit. Sometimes this gets really uh, stuck in there if it's an older starter. 
and you'll have to whack it with a hammer or something to get this housing free. It's just press fit into the end. So it takes a little bit of wiggling to get this off. It gets a little bit stuck on the rubber cover there. And the whole stator and uh, motor housing and armature come off together. So the noise you heard there was just the brushes popping back out after the uh, armature got pulled out. There's a little cap that sits on there that I knocked off. And then you can just push the armature out. So the view inside the motor housing, you can see the magnets around the outside, and then the armature and the commutator and then looking in here we have the uh, the brushes that have all pushed out because we pulled the armature out so this normally sits in like that the brushes wa uh, wipe around on the commutator so then we can remove this rubber boot so just for fun, I've got you set up here so you can see how the electrical circuit activates by the solenoid. When the solenoid turns on, it pulls down this plastic shaft. Um, the plastic shaft has this little uh, metal push nut on it and a spring and a copper washer. And that gets pulled down to contact the 12 volt battery contact into the brushes and feed current to the motor. So I'm going to hook up the solenoid to 12 volts just to watch that in action. So just picture that on a cold day, all that stands between your car starting or not is that little plastic or that little metal push knot on that little plastic rod and whether it stays on there or not. Pretty amazing. I should probably mention that this starter is actually in really great shape. Everything looks um, in beautiful condition. If you take an older one apart, you'll see all kinds of carbon dust and much shorter brushes when you open it up. I'll put a link to a 2007 starter which is very similar to this uh, in the description and that one was a lot more worn out when I rebuilt it. Um, on this one in fact if we measure the brush length it's about almost 11.2 millimeters and the service limit on those brushes is 4.3 millimeters so it's actually in great shape and doesn't really even need a rebuild. So if I was just doing this um, without the video, I'd probably just put it back together at this point because it's in good shape. But since I think you guys are probably interested in seeing the rest of the process, I'll just continue and do the rebuild anyway. So to remove this brush assembly, you actually have to remove that push nut, but you don't have to worry about damaging it or anything because when you buy a new brush assembly, it comes with a new um, push nut as well as a new um, plastic plunger so then the spring can come off and the copper washer now notice on the washer there are two different sides to it there's the smooth um, shiny side that goes up and then there's the rough surface that goes oops the rough surface that faces down um, and makes the contact. So then we can just remove the brush assembly and again this is something that you can purchase as a unit. So now you can see the planetary gear system that uh, decreases the speed and increases the torque from the motor. So normally the uh, armature sits in there, there's a little gear on the end of it and that sits in the center and rotates around like that. So I'm just going to reach in here and very gently pull these gears out. I'll clean these all off and re-lube them before reassembling. And now this uh, gear holder can come out of there. 
So now this outer plastic uh, ring gear can be pulled out of there. This whole um, plastic uh, assembly is just pushed in there, but it's pretty tight. I'm just using a little pick and then I'm going to go in on each side and just try to pull up a little bit at a time. So I don't want it to get too cockeyed in there or anything. So if you can just kind of work it a little bit side to side and take your time, it can pull right out of there. Okay, and you can see that does have also a, a bushing in there. And then looking in the end, um, you can see this is the plunger assembly. So this whole thing pushes, pulls down when the solenoid activates and that's the push rod there um, that makes the electrical contact. So that whole plunger assembly can pull out of there. And then inside here, there's an inner uh, plunger, and that's what pushes the pinion gear down. And then there's some springs um, inside of there. And so now it is all disassembled. So you can see the solenoid connection comes in there and you can see the wire and then the solenoid um, is all wound inside of this housing and you can actually see the return lead for the solenoid over on that side. The service manual recommends using some 500 or 600 grit sandpaper to clean up the carbonization on the commutator ring. And so I'm going to use some of the 600 grit sandpaper and just go in there and um, clean that up some. Um, I'll also go in and remove the carbon from between the commutator segments just using an X-Acto knife. So I won't bore you with that process, but I'll tune you in once that's done. So now I've sanded the commutator. I think it looks pretty decent. And I just cleaned up the grease off the ends. There is a specification for the overall diameter of the commutator. So that should be a minimum of 27.5 millimeters. This one is over a little bit over 28. Not that that's probably a big deal. There's also a specification for the minimum mica depth between commutator segments of 0.15 millimeter. I don't really have a good way to measure that, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to try here. Um, I don't know, it looks like maybe a third of a millimeter or so. But normally I wouldn't even bother with making that measurement, but I just thought it might be fun to try. Now there are also some electrical checks you can do on the armature according to the service manual. I don't think they're super critical. I probably wouldn't bother with them personally, but I'll include them here for completeness. The one is to measure the resistance from um, commutator contact to each adjacent contact and that should be a short circuit so you can see 0.18 ohms here from contact to contact 0.18 ohms and you can go around the whole thing to make sure that the con the commutator segments are making contact with the windings and it's all connected together the other check is to measure the resistance from the commutator contacts to the uh, core which should be open circuit and it is and then the other check is to measure the resistance from the commutator to the shaft and that should be open res open circuit as well which you can see it is so the armature um, seems to check out okay I didn't go fully around but um, you could if you wanted to so for lubrication during reassembly the service manual calls out molybdenum disulfide which is the number one ingredient in the Honda M77 assembly paste so, see down there, so that's what I'll be using. Looks like the same thing, uh, the same lubrication that was used in the gears and everything um, when we took it apart. So I'll take the inner plunger off, cleaned up all the parts, and I'll just apply a thin coat. So 
So this is the uh, the inner plunger. And just insert that on the shaft. So it just sets down in there. Okay, and then for the outer plunger, we'll have to replace the um, shaft with our new shaft. So if you buy the Honda brush assembly, it comes with the, I think they call it brush holder maybe, um, is how it's listed. But that comes with the brush unit. And it also comes with this little kit that has the new push rod and the spring and the washer and the new metal uh, push nut. And then the, uh, the new push rod just slips in there. So, just see what the contact surfaces are there. And also add a little bit of lubrication to it. Alright, and then that just inserts there. There's a little um, notch where the pull rod goes. Okay, then we'll insert this housing. I'm just going to put a little bit of lubrication on that bushing. Also lubricate this base because that's where the, uh, the gear holder rotates on and I'll coat these gears while I'm at it alright and then this just inserts in there get it lined up And then next we've got the uh, planetary gear holder that goes in. Lube on that for good measure. That just sits in there. I'll lubricate these shafts. that um, the planetary gears ride on. I'll just put a little bit of lube on these planetary gears. Slip those into place. Very nice one here. And slide that one in as well. Put a lube on the top since they rub on the bottom of the brush assembly.
Now we should be ready for the uh, new brush assembly. So now the new brush assembly just sits in there and it's got a plastic shaft that guides the um, pull shaft from the solenoid. Okay, and then next we need the new copper washer, and remember that goes rough side down. And then we insert the new spring, and that has a wider end that goes down. And then we'll have to install the new push nut there. So to install the new push nut, I just find a little uh, socket that fits over it pretty well. Then just insert it in place. And then you can use the socket to push it into place. And it doesn't go on there by a whole bunch, but just maybe an eighth of an inch or so down from the top. So next we'll put the armature in place and you do have to sometimes push the uh, brushes back just a little bit to get it to slip in there so you can kind of work, work around in a circle. And then also the um, gears have to fit um, in to, you know, interlace with the gears down there. Okay, so once that's down in place, then we have to push the springs down. So notice that it ships with the springs sticking up, so it's easier to put the armature in. And so what we'll need then is just a little screwdriver. And then we just push these springs down until they bottom out. And then when they get down to the bottom, that's what pushes the uh, brushes out in place. I'll just go around and make sure there's tension on all of the brushes. So the next step is a little bit tricky because when we go to put the housing back on the um, magnets are going to try to attract the armature and pull it up out of place. So I'm going to swing it around here. just want to get this connector on this side which is usually more of a pain. So what I'm going to use is just this, um, let me actually zoom you out just a little bit here, is this extension with a um, socket and then I'm just going to use that to press down hard on the armature while I slide the housing on over the top and hopefully hold it in place. Oops, and for, first I have to put this uh, rubber boot back in place. some little indentations inside the rubber boot um, so when you get it in place then these rubber flaps want to push down hard that's how you know you've got it all the way in so then we'll insert this over the top and again we have to make sure that we're pressing down really hard on that extension at the same time we slide this over so we prevent it from pulling the armature out It's 
just a matter of making sure it's all the way in there. Now, if you're doing it the first time, then invariably what's going to happen is that armature is going to pull out of the brushes and you're going to worry about what to do because the brushes are all pushed out. How do I get the commutator back in? Um, if you are worried about that, then it's actually pretty easy. Um, you can just take the uh, uh, commutator. So this is what the brushes will look like once the armature comes out. They'll all pop out. But then you can just reach in there and just gently move the brush out of the way. And then you can pull the spring out. And then once the spring is out, you can just compress it and put it back in from the top. And then you can put the brush um, back in where it's supposed to be. And in that way you can go around and reload it just like the brushes came from the factory and try again. So it's not a big deal if you um, if the armature does pull out on you. You can just reset the brushes and repeat the process. So now we're ready to put the um, rear cover back on. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, lubrication in the bushing in the rear cover. Then we can put that cover back in place. And you can see where did our... So it looks like that one goes there. The mark for our wire harness. And we can just tighten those down. I don't think I have a torque spec for those. Not that I think it matters too much, but... Keep losing this little clip here. Okay, and then finally, just have to put this um, electrical connector back on. And then after we get it together, I will run it through some um, electrical tests that are recommended in the service manual. And then there's that little rubber cap on there. And so it is all back together, and um, I'll get you set up, get set up here, and then um, we'll do some electrical tests on it. So for the first electrical test, I want to just make sure that the solenoid's still working correctly. So I'm just going to um, hook that the solenoid terminal up to 12 volts and have the chassis grounded. Make sure the uh, pinion gear comes out, and it does. So that's a good thing. Now I should note that when you do this testing, the service manual says to only apply current for a maximum of five seconds. Uh, the starter motor and the solenoid aren't designed to run continuously. Um, it's a lot of power, it's like 300 watts just for the solenoid alone. Um, so you don't want to leave it hooked up to the power, just run it enough to see it operational. And next we'll power up the um, starter motor and make sure the starter um, runs. So now for the final performance check, we're going to run the starter motor and make sure that the combined current into the starter and the solenoid is under 80 amps, or actually 80 amps or less per the service manual. Um, I've got the current clamp on the 12 volt um, connection and I've got that um, bolted right onto the uh, battery lug. And I've still got the solenoid connection here, so I'm just going to short that to the um, battery terminal. First we'll 
around the chassis here and fire it up and make sure it runs. So it runs, it sounds good and it looks like the current is about 74 amps so it meets the spec so it looks like it's uh, working correctly. Okay so here you see the um, inrush current. This is the combined solenoid current plus the starter current and you see it goes up really high and then comes down after the motor gets up to speed and the back EMF uh, grows and then the steady state current is seen here which is about 74.34 amps and that is below the Honda spec of uh, no load it should be 80 amps or less so it looks good well that's all I've got for today folks I hope you enjoyed this video on rebuilding your Honda starter motor and found it interesting if you have any questions or criticisms or know a better way to do any of this um, I'd love to hear about it in the comments section and thanks for watching